Hi, everybody. Welcome to our seventh civics outreach uh, virtual webinar. Um, we are here to talk about uh, search trends and more today. Um, we're really excited to welcome you. I'm joined here by my colleagues, Erica and Andrea, and later we'll be joined by our uh, trends guru, uh, Simon, who will go through uh, a live demo of the, tr the trends platform. So we're really excited about that as well. Um, so as you're tuning in, uh, make sure that you are uh, putting your questions down below, uh, right underneath uh, the screen right here uh, with the big blue button. Uh, just ask us questions throughout and we'll get to the Q&A uh, live right after we're finished with the presentation. Um, so we'll give everybody a few minutes to jump on here and um, we'll get started in a few minutes.
All right. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in, uh, for uh, learning about Google search trends and more today. Um, I'd love to introduce my colleagues, Erica and Andrea, who are going to take it from here. Uh, so Erica, why don't you kick us off? Hello, everyone. So we are very excited to be covering Google tools for civics today. If you've joined some of our previous webinars, um, we've covered a wide range of topics. Today is going to focus on search trends and more. So we're going to cover helping people how we're helping people find useful information, how you can establish yourself online with authoritative information. And we have a special guest, Simon Rogers, who leads um, all of our data on Google Trends itself. So he'll be walking you through how to utilize Google Trends in the most effective way possible. So the first thing that we wanna cover is how we're helping people find useful information. In times of crisis, we know that people that providing users with access to timely, actionable information is crucial. In Google, we're all we always want to give users relevant and reliable information from high quality sources. For searches that pertain to topics like health information, as you can see, I'm my whole house is Google, <laughs> but um, for searches that pertain to health information that are particularly sensitive and may be susceptible to some lower quality information. We have systems in place to give more weight in our ranking systems to factors like our understanding of the authoritativeness, expertise, or trustworthiness of the pages we present in response. So here you'll see the World Health Organization articles, and we've deemed that an authoritative source. In search, the best way we can help users looking for authoritative and reliable information is in how we rank our organic search results. So that starts with expanding our search experience. When COVID-19 was declared a public health emergency by the WHO in late January, we launched an SOS alert and that has resources and safety information from the WHO along with the latest news. The alert is launched in 25 languages across dozens of countries, and people in more than 50 countries can access localized public health guidance from health authorities. Now, as we continue to see more and more people seeking information, we're merging our existing SOS alerts with knowledge panels that contain authoritative information on COVID-19 systems, symptoms, <laughs> prevention, statistics of cases around the globe, and you can toggle between for information in each section. So for more information on knowledge panels, I'm going to hand it off to Andrea, who can walk you through what those are and how they work. Great. Thank you so much, Erica. Um, hey, everyone. Andrea from Google Civics Outreach Team. Um, I'm going to go through some of the tools you can use to establish yourselves online, um, especially on search with authoritative information. Um, but if you have any questions at all while we're going through this presentation, please feel free to submit your questions below and we will address them at the end in the Q&A section. Great, so first and foremost, just wanna talk about how a typical Google search works today. First, you will see um, Google ads, uh, maybe they might be search ads, depending on what the search query is. From from there, you'll see the organic search results. You might see a knowledge panel on the right-hand side of a desktop search. And then you might see a business profile on the right hand side of a desktop search as well. So let's just talk about some tools you can use to make sure that your organization is established well on search. The first uh, tool I want to talk about today is the ability to claim your knowledge panel. So knowledge panels, as I said earlier, are dedicated information boxes that are on the right hand side of a desktop search. They're actually the very first thing that pops up on a mobile search. Um, they're dedicated information boxes um, about entities for whom we have enough information on the Internet. And um, what they do is they spotlight information on these entities. Um, and a lot of times they'll include things such as a picture, a title of the entity, a Wikipedia snippet, 
some fast facts about that entity, and then it may or may not have links to that entity's social profiles. Great. So um, what we want to do um, to work with you all is to make sure um, that you can actually clean your knowledge panel to make sure that the information um, in your entity's knowledge panel is as accurate and authoritative as possible. Um, so what you'll do in order to claim that knowledge panel is first you'll sign into um, a shared Google account for your organization, um, and then you'll search for your entity's name in Google search. From there, if you do have a knowledge panel, there'll be a little claim this knowledge panel button on the bottom left side of your knowledge panel, um, and you'll click that button. That will prompt you to this page, um, which in there you will click get verified. And then from there, um, you'll go through our verification process. Uh, we obviously want to make sure that you are the verified representative um, of the um, person whose knowledge panel you are trying to claim. So you'll go through our verification process. Once you've gone through our verification process, um, this is what a um, claimed knowledge panel will look like. It'll virtually look the same as it did before. Just that little button with the claim your knowledge panel will have gone away. From there, the next tool that you can use to establish your organization while on search is to suggest edits to the knowledge panel that you just claimed. Um, oftentimes, um, some really common edits that you we see uh, civic entities suggesting is changing the profile photo to update it to a more current photo of your entity, um, adding educational experience, or maybe updating or adding um, links to your entity's social profiles so people can easily find um, your social profiles on other platforms. Um, once you have claimed your knowledge panel, you'll go in and you'll find um, the uh, knowledge panel and it'll have those little pencil buttons and that's what you can use um, to edit in the interface. Here are some um, links to help you claim and suggest edits to your knowledge panel. But if you have any questions um, about claiming and suggesting edits to your knowledge panel, um, please feel free to drop those questions below and we'll be happy to answer them um, at the end of this. But for now, I will pass it over to Erica, who's going to talk about Google My Business. Great. Now let's talk about your maps panel and listing your office location um, and or multiple locations on Google Maps so constituents or your audience can easily connect with you. So again, just to touch on where this shows up in search on desktop. It shows up on the right hand side. If you have a knowledge panel, it'll populate under that. In uh, mobile, it'll just be right at the top there. Again, if you have a knowledge panel, right under it. Um, this is an example of so this is an example of Google search results for an organization. In this, in the case before, we have George Washington again highlighted here. So if you've already claimed your knowledge panel, I mean, you've already claimed your maps panel, you can add photos, updates. So if constituents are looking for information, you you can really use it as a um, virtual welcome banner. So even if you aren't physically in the office, if people are looking for information, you can post photos, videos, anything you post on YouTube, you can post here. Um, and if you want to go ahead and verify your business, just reach out to us at civics outreach at google.com and we can walk you through that process. And you can also update your panel in on your phone. So if you prefer to use your mobile app that's available on Android and iPhone, just look it up at google.com slash business. All the information will be there. So we've now launched in the age of COVID-19 new resources to help businesses communicate changes. So if your office is temporarily closed or you aren't physically there, which is the case for a lot of these civic entities, you can go ahead and mark temporarily closed. And there just there are some wider sweeping um, bulk edits 
based on data from local governments that are applying, meaning there can be no dine-in edits for food. I'm not sure if there are any restaurants or restaurant type organizations on this webinar, but if there are, you cannot say that you're offering dine-in for options for food, and then you can temporarily close um, places that need to close according to the government mandate. And we'll be doing bulk edits for that. And we've already, and we've also launched um, this globally and it's now discoverable in search. So, um, that, and that'll be coming soon. So it's now discoverable in search and then when it's in maps, that'll be coming soon. So again, any questions you have information on that, either ask the question um, on this webinar here, or you can email civics outreach at google.com. And these are more resources. So I'm now gonna <laughs> hand it over to Simon um, on trends. Do we wanna? I'm, hi, I thought I was in the backstage and here I am. Hello, everybody, and um, thanks for having me in um, in the session today. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to demonstrate uh, trends in real time. Um, Google Trends, just as a background, is um, probably the world's biggest open data set. And luckily, we have a tool to explore it, which makes it a bit easier. Um, and it's really there as a way to kind of give people a sense of how searches work. And search is an amazing tool to get at what people honestly care about. Um, there's a, you're never as honest as you are with your search engine. And so being able to see that in real time, it is really a powerful data set. So I'm going to show you the trends tool that's there and show you some of the work we've done around um, coronavirus too. And hopefully that will give you a sense of, of um, what we have. So I'm just going to share my screen. And give me a second. So have this faultless uh, display here, right? I'm just going to show you. So hopefully now you can see the Google Trends, um, uh, the Google Trends screen. And I'm just going to check that's working. Yes, it's working. That's good. So this is Google Trends. It's trends.google.com. Uh, wherever you are um, in the world, you get a version for each country, and the US um, data is, is all here. So what you've got, I'll just show you quickly through what you have on this page. So starting at the bottom, what we have down here are real-time trending searches. So these are searches that um, just are algorithmically populated, and I'll just show you how that works. So one here, you've got daily search trends. So these are the top... Um, trending uh, searches for per day. You have a little bit of information there on each one, and what it's about and so on. We've also got these real-time search trends, and the real-time search trends are fascinating and entertaining and interesting, and they give you a sense of what's happening just within the last hour. And what they are really is a, a combination of different search terms all rising in search trends collectively. That's how the system guesses that it's a new story. So for instance, if I take um, uh, this first story here, I don't really know what it's about, but you can see here that you've got um, a sudden spike in the last hour for this particular story. This is uh, a Virgin Galactic deal maker. I talk about IPOs, and there was actually some stories written about this combination um, recently as well. So these grey bars here show news articles. So it's super useful, and there's other information you can get there. So, for instance, say you are only interested in health, which obviously is a big concern for us at the moment. These are the trending searches around health within the last 24 hours. You can see a story like this. So this is about contact tracing. Um, sometimes you get this interesting thing where story spikes, like here, and then people start writing about it later. So you can see as a kind of detection service, it could be really useful. You can um, There's a number of different categories there, science, text, sports, top stories and so on. All categories will give you everything, and it's quite a good, useful way to get around it. So that's the real-time trend. You can see this there for a number of countries around the world. Say you're interested in another country, you can see it there too. You can see how, how it compares. Let's go back to the trends front page now. And then what we also have here are these are what we call curated pages. And what I mean by that is that they have an editorial team um, within Google which creates these pages around big news stories. Obviously, we have something around the census, for instance. 
If you click on there, you'll see a number of kind of things around census, like what are the questions around it? Obviously, you can see here in searches that this census is already the, the top search census uh, since 2004, which is as far back as Google data goes, so way more search than, than the last one in 2010. Um, you've got a number of things here which are useful. I'll show some more of these later. But you can see you've got a map here showing where in the country is searching most for um, census. These are the trending rising queries, which are accelerating the fastest. And these are searches around census jobs, which is obviously a big search for people to, uh, to get jobs there. And then you can see uh, since 2010 where the top places in the world have been uh, searching around the census. So there's a lot of data there that we've manually kind of curated and put on the page. I'm just going to show you quickly the coronavirus page because that has probably got more in-depth information than we usually have on one of these pages, and that's because obviously it's such a huge story. So I'll just talk you through this page really quickly. What we have here at the top of these are trending insights, which we update once a day. And these are just random things which we find um, in search which are, are interesting. They're kind of global and home. So for instance, people asking about the immigration um, executive order or people asking, can hairdressers work from home? Or um, is Oktoberfest cancelled? You really get a sense of the spread of the way that people search. You know, we're very eclectic human beings, and you can see that in the way that we search for things. So that's uh, a ton of data there, which is kind of real time, and we curate that data and add it every day. And we've also got other data here, which is a mixture of kind of manually curated. So for instance, here we have the top questions that were asked in the last day. And the top questions are asked last day in Georgia because um, obviously the story yesterday about Georgia reopening. And then down here, we've got these more algorithmically driven uh, charts and visuals. So you've got a map here, for instance, this map shows search into coronavirus the past day by metro area. You can actually adjust these visuals. So you say, I want to look at it by state or I want to look at it by city. I want to see which are the top cities that are searching in the past day. And then the other thing you can do to make it easier to read is click on that. And you've got there a list of the places in ranked order. So we go back to metro area, which is kind of a good way to look at it. We've got these uh, metropolitan areas are ranked in order of search interest. The cool thing about search data is that it's normalized. And what that means is you can compare a small place to a big place. So you can compare a small town to a big town because it's basically looking at how significant something is in search as a proportion of all searches. And you can see here, um, we've got a box here on the right which says coronavirus, coronavirus trending queries. What these are is these are the searches which are rising, accelerating um, the most in the last um, day. So if you look at, they say, the top searches, the top searches are things we'll probably see most days, like tips or cases or updates. But the rising searches are things that accelerate fast, and you can see them kind of change over time. So um, at home coronavirus tests, they've been used for us about the same. You can see those. Uh, they're spiking there. Then we've got a map of cities. Uh, we've got searches here for different symptoms over time. You can see um, how they've how they've kind of accelerated and gone down over time. You can see which is the most searched at the moment, which is fever. And then we've got these other sections here around particular issues like unemployment or um, testing or schools, um, school closures, um, where it's being searched most, which is in Missoula in uh, Montana. Um, and you can kind of keep going down. You see global searches, how how we compare to other countries. And now you've got a lot of other pages which are for different countries. So say if you were interested in, say, some Brazil, whatever you can see up there. Um, and then some more information down here around way people are searching for how-to. How-to questions, for instance. You can see that there's a, <laughs> a lot of questions about hand sanitizer and face mask tutorials and so on. So that data is really... Uh, hopefully useful. All of these visuals and maps and so on are both embeddable and shareable. What that means is if you click that, and so you have a website um, which will accept iframes, you can use this code here to embed that visual. And you can either keep the data updated or you can freeze it in time by unchecking that box. And by that, I mean that you could show the map as it is now, or you can have it keep updating so every time somebody reloads a page, it updates. So and then I'm going to just show you um, one of the kind of the superpowers of the Trends site, which is the Explore tool. And what the Explore tool does, it gives you the power to search for how the world looks for any particular trend. So say, we, obviously, coronavirus is our story at the moment. So I'm just going to add it in here. There we go. And 
um, you get this whole box come up with a lot of stuff. Now, one thing to say really quickly is that there is a difference between searches for the word coronavirus and searches for the topic of coronavirus. And that partly that's because of the way that Google search works is that everything is um, aggregated into topics and entities. It's the difference between searching for Lincoln the president or Lincoln the movie or Lincoln the car. Um, and the same thing applies to any topic. So my advice is always to use the topic rather than the search term. Using the search term, you're just going to get the word coronavirus. If we add in the top, let's have a look, see if that brings in anything else. See, there's a little bit more data there by adding the topic. So my advice is always use topics where you can and only compare topics against themselves or search terms against themselves, because otherwise you're going to get something that's not and that's less kind of meaningful. So I'm going to keep this. I'm going to use the topic of coronavirus. And there's a number of things here that I'm going to show you which are quite useful. So firstly, you've got a lot of kind of country and regional places you can search for there. We'll get into that in a second. You've also got uh, time ranges. You can search within the past seven days, which is real-time data, down to a few minutes ago. And you can go back to 2004. And there is a slight difference. If you search back to 2004, which is what I'm going to do here, you get searches which um, are accurate up to about two days ago. If you search in the past seven days, you get searches which are accurate up to a few minutes ago. There's a slightly different data set, so it's just one thing to be aware of. You can see here this search for coronavirus over time, which is a, a long time. You can also search, um, I'm just going to go back to the last seven days for this. You can also search for categories. What categories are different types of topic, which the search engine at the back end tries to allocate stuff to. So for instance, you might be interested in just searches around government and coronavirus. And you can compare that to, um, and, but then you've also got within that, you've got other kind of, other kind of allocations of the data. You could go to government. Um, or military or whatever it might be. My um, take on that is it's useful. I don't actually use it that much, but it can be a useful way to kind of refine searches, especially when you're getting down to things down here about um, related searches. And well, I'll show you that in a second. The other thing you can do is different types of search. So you have image search, which are people searching for images, pictures, or Google images. News search, obviously people using the Google News tool. Google Shopping. And, um, and YouTube, and you do get kind of variations between between the two. So I don't know, if we go to a YouTube search, let's have a look. Um, you see the search looks different, the line looks different, there's fewer searches, but these are kind of what people are, are looking for on YouTube in the last few days, um, which are a little bit different. So we go back to um, web search is my advice because it's the most, but sometimes you want to look at YouTube search, you want to kind of refine it down. And just scrolling down here, we've got a lot of geographic um, breakdowns here as well. So say you can look, as before, you've got metropolitan areas there, which are the Nielsen uh, metro areas, which cover kind of city areas, but then uh, obviously less populated areas are bigger on this map. Um, and then you can actually use the map as a navigation tool if you want to kind of click on that. It's going down to Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, these are searches in coronavirus. That's the low as you can go. And then we can see the cities and towns within Salt Lake City, and they're kind of ranked in order there of, of search interest. And if you want to, if you want to find a smaller place, you can also click on the, at include low search volume regions, and you'll bring back smaller towns there where maybe there are less people, so there's less people searching, but the search interest could be higher. Let's just show you a couple of things we've got over here as well. Um, so we have on the, the left here are these rising related queries, which I mentioned before. So these are things that people are actually typing into their search engine. So for instance, um, and this is just in the last week. So say I choose the last day. I want to see what's accelerating today. What's different about today to, to yesterday. Over that, you've got a lot of searches around uh, hydroxychloroquine, obviously with the, the uh, medical study that came out yesterday. Uh, second wave is coming up. We know that because CDC mentioned that as a, uh, can you get coronavirus more than once? These are things that people are actually searching right now. Um, and uh, with topics, these are subjects. So obviously, you'll see second wave, things that might be fun. There's, there's probably more of this. Um, I always use these. I think these are more interesting and, and can really show you something fascinating. There's nothing you can do which is quite useful. So up here, you can actually compare five terms. So if I took... Um, 
say influenza versus coronavirus, let's have a look. Start doing these comparisons. And my advice is really to, um, I'm gonna go back so the past 90 days to when this crisis started. My advice is really to use, actually let's do the whole year. My advice is really to use um, uh, comparisons to get an idea of how significant things are. So say we take coronavirus, let's take the weather. People search for the weather a lot. So we can add that there. You can start to compare different topics, see how the weather is literally one of the top things people search on Google. You can see how big coronavirus is at the moment. Let's say news, people looking for news. Um, and again, that's high, but coronavirus is higher and so on. But one of the other things you can do is you can add these filters to compare different places. So I'm just gonna show you um, this window here is something I just prepared. So this searches for coronavirus in different towns and cities across the country. So you've got searches in Sioux Falls, which is the blue line, uh, across the US as a whole, which is the red line, San Francisco, um, Oakland, which is where I am, um, which is the yellow line, Milwaukee, which is green, and um, Philadelphia here, uh, um, which is purple. And you can see how different people can spike at different times. So you've got there the Bay Area as one of the higher early searches uh, where the early cases were, but over here you've got um, Philadelphia spiking, and then um, Milwaukee a few days later. And here, over here, we've got Sioux Falls. So you can actually see quite a lot from the data and how it kind of changes over time. And if you scroll it down, you've got these kind of searches in different places and the, the rising search as well in those places. You can actually see in your area what people are searching for right now and how it's how it's changed over time. That's for the whole year. If I change this to um, I can go in here and I can change to the last day, say, so let's just do that. And it's gonna, I'm gonna have to change all of them in one go because it's not gonna like um, trying to compare different time ranges. Last day. There's nothing more entertaining than watching somebody clicking drop downs on a live demonstration, but uh, I need that. And last one. There we go. So you can see in the past day how search looked, even like minute by minute in those places, specifically around all around this one topic, why that might be like, might be interesting to know why there's a spike in Sioux Falls at um, that particular time there. And also here you can see this. So in say Sioux Falls, these are the spiking and rising searches around coronavirus in the past day. People looking for the IRS for stimulus checks, I guess, look at relief bill, um, I live updates and so on. And um, the other thing which I should just mention before I stop is that all of the charts and visuals you see on the trend site are, in, are embeddable and you can even download the data. So for instance, if you click on that, say you want that list of searches and you've got here um, the, the embed code, you can keep the data updated or you can uncheck it and it'll freeze it. You can also Download this data as CSV, see these little download buttons. And then you can share it as well, obviously. So um, that is the Google Trends tool. It's capable of a lot of um, interesting stuff. But if you want to get a real sense of what people search for, where you are, it's a, it's a great place to start. Thank you, guys. I'm going to stop now and uh, turn you back to, the, to Maria. Awesome. Thanks so much, Simon. I know that that we learned a lot. Um, Simon, a uh, qu question for you. I know um, a lot of folks on, on the call here. Um, I, I know the answer to this question, but a lot of, of folks on here um, have constituencies that are in a very small area, mm -hmm. uh, like congressional districts or uh, Senate districts. Can you talk a little bit about how somebody might be able to visualize the data within their own district? So um, the, the areas that are on the Google Trends site um, are states, so regional, so state level, and it goes down to metropolitan area, which are these Nielsen kind of media marketing areas. But you have got city data as well. So one thing we have seen people do in the past is average across, say you know all the cities that are in a congressional district, you can average across those cities, which is useful for things like, say you've got a list of things you want to rank. Or you want to see um, you know, how big coronavirus is compared to searches for I don't know influenza or whatever. 
So it's a bit of a hack, um, but it's not uh, a bad way to do it. And we've actually done that before. We've worked with geographers to do that in the past. Unfortunately, the way the system goes, it's only available at that level. We do have data down to county level. Um, you can see that on some um, uh, some of the sites. Uh, we'll probably be adding some county level data, say, to the coronavirus site, but you can only really see that within the state. Um, so yeah, that's where we are at the moment. Unfortunately, you know, we would love to have congressional district level, level data. So we'll, we'll always, uh, certainly around the election, I'm sure we'll be publishing data, say of the top unsearched um, issues at congressional district uh, level. Uh, so one thing I would say is to follow us on um, Twitter at Google Trends and um, really, you know, we'll, we'll definitely announce it on there when we do. Amazing, that, that's awesome, Simon. And I know, uh, Simon, you send around a newsletter um, so folks can yeah. sign up for that as well. Um, just email uh, civics-outreach at google.com. We'll be happy to add you to Simon's newsletter. He sends one out all the time, uh, especially right now with all the updates around coronavirus and things like that. So uh, really educational. Uh, Simon, uh, another question uh, for you, uh, just in terms of kind of real time search trends and kind of how folks in these offices may be able to utilize these trends. Um, you know, what what different terms can you can you search? And can you talk about the difference between um, sort of the topic and a search term, uh, especially if you're searching somebody's name? Yeah, so I'll, um, I'll, I'll show really quickly how that works. Actually, uh, bear with me a second, let's get back in. So you can all see Google Trends now. So there is a difference, and I, I mentioned this before, but basically what Google looks for is it tries to allocate searches to different topics, which helps us when we're analyzing them. But if you look for somebody's name, um, let's do the present right now. Um, you can obviously, just if you want to, just search for that name. So that's what it looks like if I do that. But say you, but you get much better results if you also search for the topic. Partly that's, let's see if I could spell probably that would be helpful. Partly that is because um, people search in lots of different ways. You can see the, the gap there between the two. And um, there, are, there are probably thousands of ways that people search for Donald Trump. So um, if you do the topic, it will incorporate those. And it's also language agnostic. So there'll be searches in different languages and so on. You'll get much better results. You can see how much more data there is there. Um, between looking for the topic versus just the words. So I would always advise using the topic. Um, it exists for a reason. Um, and sometimes you get things that are um, that won't show up as a topic yet because topics are constantly being kind of. Oh, I think we might have, might have lost Simon there. Um, but he was saying that uh, he recommends using the topic over um, the actual just search term um, when you think about your principal's name or your organization. Uh, so definitely recommend that. Ah, I see him. He's back here. Sorry Hi, about Simon. That. No worries. So just um, later, just, I'll, I'll finish that thought quickly. So topics are basically constantly being added into the knowledge graph by by Google's kind of technology. So it's always worth using to the topic. But sometimes you know, it might be a new term that's not really showing up yet. Um, say there was a new drug discovered tomorrow that would would cure coronavirus, that might not have a topic yet because it's new. So then it's okay to use the words, but I would always advise using the topic if you can. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, I'm actually going to add back in uh, Erica and Andrea to our stream. Hi, ladies. Um, so one question uh, that we have here is, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about shared Google accounts. Um, I know that you mentioned them uh, throughout. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about those and why they're important to claiming your knowledge panel and business panel. Yeah. Um, for sure. I'm happy to take this one. Um, thanks, Maria. Um, so oftentimes we um, are talking about using a shared Google account um, to utilize a lot of um, the tools that we talk about, such as claiming, suggesting edits to your knowledge panel, um, using a YouTube channel, claiming your business listing. You have to have a Google account, not necessarily a Gmail account, but you do have to have a Google account um, to utilize a lot of these tools. Um, and if you work, um, 
at an organization or for a member of Congress or for a governor, any sort of elected official. And uh, there might be a lot of different staff members managing um, those different tools and you don't want to have those tools linked to one individual staffer's account because as we know there can be a lot of turnovers um, at an organization and when one staffer leaves you don't want the password to your youtube channel or to the knowledge panel to go out the door with the staffer so we just really recommend um, creating a shared google account so multiple people can access these different tools Awesome. Thanks, Andrea. I think it's so important to outline that and uh, you want to you want to save the staffer down the road uh, for any trouble getting into these accounts. So very, very helpful. Um, as always, uh, if you do have any questions, make sure to drop them below. Uh, just hit the blue button and we're happy to answer them. I do see a question uh, here from Chloe. Uh, she's wondering if we can access the slides afterwards. The answer to that is, of course. Um, of course, I can't give you access to Simon's live demo because it's <laughs> live, but um, we're happy to send over those slides. Feel free to email civics-outreach at google.com and we're happy to send those over to you. Uh, as of course, if you have any other questions as well, you can email them there. Um, and for what it's worth real quick, um, Maria, correct me if I'm wrong, but this presentation will also be up on the Google News Initiative channel. So if people want to go back and see how uh, Simon did the interactive um, Google Trends demo, um, they can just go back and rewatch this on YouTube. Yes, uh, and you can actually watch it right here live. So uh, if you scroll down on the page, you'll see other webinars that we've done that are on demand. So you can watch this one and those uh, right here uh, on the events on air page. So um, there and on YouTube. So thanks for that shout out, Andrea. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions here. Um, so with that, thanks so much everybody for watching. Uh, we're, we're really excited to present these to you every week. Uh, next week, we'll be focusing on uh, measurement tools. So uh, a little bit about Google Analytics. We're going to bring in uh, Neil Hoyne from our measurement team. And he's going to talk all about the tricks of the trade there. Uh, make sure you tune in. Uh, that's next Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, right here, same place at 3 p.m. Eastern next Thursday. So we'll see you then. And thanks for tuning in.